here come some people. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's me again coming to you from Herod's Creek with my BFF, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Uh, because I want to show you another tree because I'm so fascinated by trees and their ministry. So you can see this one has fallen and it's fallen uphill. Here's the canopy right here. And then we're going to back up and we're going to run into some strangers who don't know they're coming on. So there's the canopy you can see up at the top of the hill. And then as I scan, you can see um, how it covered the trail. Okay. Say hi to your mama. Hey, mom. <laughs> and it's been cut up. Um, see how many pieces they had to um, chainsaw that. Look at that bark. It's like super hard and like impenetrable. Um, I mean, that is a lot. Um, there's some places they had to actually reroute the trail. Um, okay. And then Karen's going to point to where the root ball is. Yeah. Way in the background there. You can see through the um, growth. So we estimate that this is probably about uh, at least 150 meters, if not 200 meter long tree. And as you can see, it is D E A. D dead. Whoa. Okay, that's not gonna have to hold us. Okay. Uh, come a little closer. No, I still need the other page. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, this tree to me looks so strong, but um, it is not invincible. It got vinced in a storm. Um, and it took a lot of work to clear the trail. Um, so in its life, uh, this tree was a remarkable presence in the whole canopy, if you lift up your eyes to that. Um, in its death, this tree is changing the way people hike. So in life and in death, this tree ministers. Like you cannot walk through the trail. In fact, there was a while you couldn't walk through the trail before they cut it. But you can't walk through without appreciating um, just the magnitude of this tree. Um, in in its death, this tree is also giving new life. So look at this impenetrable bark, right? But then the bark has opened up to let these shoots grow through. It gives a whole new meaning to the word shooting, doesn't it? So how many are there? There's like one, two, three, four, five. I mean, just on this patch alone, there's five shoots coming up. Um, I sure could use a botanist to help me understand how something so lifeless could provide this life. Um, how can a tree whose leaves have turned brown up there now um, produce green shoots? So, Veril, anybody? If you know the ways of trees, please comment below and help us understand how this can help them. I only know the way of one tree. And like this one, it took a lifeless body and provided life for all. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus died to fulfill his father's mission of saving every human being. Every single human. Even the sinners. That's actually a little priest humor. Mm -hmm. You get it? Every human is a sinner. See, Karen gets it. So <laughs> Jesus saves everyone. I have to actually remind myself daily of the scandalous reality that John describes when Jesus says, I will draw all people to myself. Because here's my inner dialogue when I hear that passage from scripture today. Jesus, you are dying for all people. Have you even met some people? Do you really want to save even the people who drove the nails into your hands and spit on you and left you for dead and even the people who thought your mission was just a hoax you want to die for those people mm, honestly there's some people if their sins are not forgiven it would be okay with me just don't tell anybody I said that <sighs> only please forgive my sins when I treat you as anything less than amazing 
So there's a little insight into my prayer life. Um, I need to reread Jesus's love story every single day, both in the Holy Scripture and in my journal. Here's my inner dialogue with, Je with Jesus personally. <laughs> Jesus, you provide for me when I'm needy. You strengthen me when I am weak. You weaken me when I need to rest. You give me friends like Karen who find trails like this where I can discover trees that stop me in my tracks. Thank you. Because if this dead as a doornail tree can provide new life, then what if I can too? Me, someone who I regard as good as dead, black hearted, hopeless, and way too old to be creative. If God designed an entire forest to grow after a storm, I don't have any excuse and I'm compelled to grow as God designs all living things to grow. I will lift up my heart, just like Jesus lifts up his heart to his Father. And God the Father keeps his promise to raise Jesus from the dead so that everyone who believes in heart lifting can know and feel the love of that same heart. I think right now your inner dialogue might sound like this. Well, Elizabeth, how can I lift up my heart? It's too heavy with all the illness and strife in the world, especially right here in our own Louisville Metro. Oh, I feel the weight. I do. Mm -hmm. I cannot lift up my heart unless I bend my knee. Now, Karen knows I'm not gonna bend my knee right now because I won't be able to get up. <laughs> <laughs> but I can pray the prayer of Manassas. So, I mean, Manasseh. Manasseh was one of the most notorious sinners in Holy Scripture. But he says, in his prayer, I bend the knee of my heart to ask your forgiveness, Jesus. Resurrection life is a bent knee life. So I am not a botanist. I cannot help you understand how a dead tree can grow all these new trees. But I can help you understand how a dead human mm -hmm, can be raised from death to new life. I weathered storms that took down the best of me, and somehow I still had a heartbeat, but I didn't know what for. I felt as good as dead, but it's there in that cold place where the words of the good as dead Jesus came to me, that God forgives and loves the entire world. That's when I know that if Jesus can forgive everyone in the entire world, then I can forgive myself. And that is when the shooting starts. Amen.